Hello again. This is Math 2232 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is Trigonometric Substitutions. As always, be an attentive learner as you watch this video. By way of introduction, consider the following two examples. In this case, if I ask you to evaluate the um, indefinite integral of x, the square root of 25x squared minus 4 uh, dx, you do a u substitution, u would be what's underneath the radical. This x dx would be part of du. And you could, could complete this by adding 1 to the exponent and dividing by the new exponent and doing some simplification. Similarly, if we had the square root of 25x squared minus 4 in the denominator, again, you could let u equal that. This x dx in the numerator would become part of the du. You would add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, simplify, and you would have this. Notice again that we always put the answer in terms of, not in terms of u, but we put this in terms of the native variable, which was x. Now, both of these use the substitution u equal 25x squared minus 4 and are pretty easy for you to do, but let's try this next one. I'm going to ask you to give it a go to evaluate the indefinite integral of the square root of 25x squared minus 4 over x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. My guess is that you crashed and burned because in this case, the substitution u is equal to 25x squared minus 4 will not work because we don't have the x dx in the numerator that the substitution needs. So we're going to have to do something else, and here's what we're going to do. Do not worry about where this come from, but follow my steps and follow every step. So it would be nice if we could reduce this to... Uh, terms uh, that are under the radical into a single term somehow, and this substitution will do it. Now, this substitution actually has several parts. We're going to let x equal 2 over 5 secant theta. Again, don't worry about where this came from. But if we say that x is 2 over 5 secant theta, we know several additional things. We know that dx is equal to 2 over 5. The derivative of the secant theta is secant theta tan theta d theta, so dx becomes 2 over 5 secant theta tan theta d theta. And we also know from right triangle trigonometry that if theta is my angle here, this is a right angle. If the secant of theta is equal to, um, uh, I, I just solve here for secant of theta, that is 5x over 2. And the secant is the opposite over the adjacent. And so if we know two sides of a right triangle, we know the third. So this is the right triangle. So this simple substitution also generates three additional facts. Let's see what it does with the radical. So this is the square root of 25x squared minus 4. Now I'm going to make this substitution. So x squared becomes this minus 4. And the 25s cancel, so this is 4 secant squared theta minus 4. I can factor the 4 out under the radical, and I can pull the 2 outside of the radical. So this is 2 square root of secant squared theta minus 1. And if we use this trig identity, that the secant squared theta minus 1 is the tangent squared theta, then I have that this becomes 2 tangent squared theta the square root of that. Now, since the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, we do have that this is 2, the absolute value of tangent of theta. Now, what we're really going to do is for an indefinite integral, we're just going to drop the absolute values for simplicity. Now, and we do this for independent, so we're going to call this 2 tan theta in just a moment. For independent integrals, this casual treatment of the sign, S-I-G-N, 
will be adopted. Um, that doesn't make me happy, but everybody does it, so we will do it too. But for a definite integral, where the answer is going to be a number, a significantly more rigorous approach must be adopted, and we will be doing that as well. And I could have put a smiley face here for that one. So let's now see what happens. So this is the substitution we're doing. So this integral becomes, uh, this was 2 tan theta, x was 2 fifths secant theta, and dx was 2 over 5 secant theta, tan theta, d theta. A bunch of things cancel out. This 2 over 5 secant theta cancels with that 2 over 5 secant theta, and I have 2. I pull that out of the integral. This is tan squared theta, d theta. Now, we know how to integrate tan squared theta, d theta, because of the previous lecture. And so we're going to continue doing that. We uh, say tangent squared is secant squared theta minus 1. The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent, and the antiderivative of 1 is theta. And I so have this. We're not finished yet, however, because we have to put this back into terms of the native variable that we started with, which was an x. So we're going to go back to the triangle. And you see tan theta, there's theta. This is the opposite over the, uh, of, over the adjacent. So this is what we get for tangent theta, the square root of 25x squared minus 4 over 2. So also, theta is going to be the angle whose secant was 5x over 2. That means theta is the inverse secant of 5x over 2. Now, many students are not as comfortable dealing with the inverse secant. For example, there's not a button for this on your calculator. Uh, so you can also use trig identities to realize that this theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the reciprocal, 2 over 5x. So you see that integral became 2. This was tan theta, so what I put is what tan theta was. And this is minus the inverse cosine of 5 over excuse me, 2 over 5x. This was minus theta plus c, and this is the final answer to our problem. Let's uh, do a definite integral. So evaluate the following definite integral. We're going to go from 2 over 5 to 4 over 5, and uh, you see the integrand is the same. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. OK, uh, the thing we have to worry about here, or we can worry about here, is the um, uh, limits. So you see this, we're integrating dx, so these limits are dx. But if we're integrating d theta, like we did, these limits have to be theta, because the limits have to match up with this variable. So. When x is 2 over 5, the lower limit, we're solving with our substitution that 2 over 5 is equal to 2 over 5 secant theta. And that's 2 over 5, 1 over cosine theta. That means the cosine theta has to equal 1, and theta is the inverse cosine of 1, and that is 0. So you see the lower limit is going to be 0. Similarly, if x is equal to 4 over 5, the upper limit, 4 over 5, is equal to 2 over 5 secant theta. Uh, and that tells me that uh, 2 over 5 times 1 over cosine uh, is equal to that. So cosine of theta is 1 half. <clears throat> and that means that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 half, which is pi over 3. Again, these are exact numbers. Uh, and we're picking um, uh, these. Uh, we're staying away from. Uh, pi over 2 because the uh, 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 secant is undefined there. Okay, so those are limits. So now that's what we're really going to plug in. We don't have to go back to our original problem to pr plug them in. We can plug them in right here. And if we do, we get 2 square root of 3 minus 2 over 2 pi over 3. This is the exact answer, and that's what I'd expect you to uh, tell me at the end of the problem. Again, we don't have to go back, and we really didn't even need to have a triangle in order to do this. 
So our takeaway from this example is that we have to be very careful dealing with definite integrals. The limits matter. We have to be careful with those. And the a key takeaway is if you end up with a problem that has the square root of b squared x squared minus a squared, this substitution is worth considering. It might work. x is equal to a over b secant theta, and you have to stay away from pi over 2. Let's look at a different kind of example. Here we're to evaluate the indefinite integral from uh, the indefinite integral. There are no limits. Uh, so this is 1 over, this is x to the fourth, the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Now, if you try x equal 3 secant theta, you will crash and burn because that's not going to work in this case. One way you could have crashed and burned is getting the square root of a negative, um, uh, negative number. So that's not going to work, but something else will work. So for this one, again, don't worry about where this comes from. Uh, this substitution is going to work. So we're going to let x equal 3 sine theta. Now, x equal 3 sine theta, here's theta, this is our right triangle, and that means that sine of theta is equal to x over 3. So sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that is x over 3. So this is our triangle, and we know this third side can be calculated from the Pythagorean theorem, so this is the square root of 9 minus x squared. Also, we know that... Um, dx uh, is going to be the differential here. This is 3 cosine theta d theta. So with that substitution then, here's what we get. 9 minus x squared becomes, now when I square this I get 9, but I can pull both 9's out as a 3 outside the radical. So this is 3, the square root of 1 minus sine squared. This is 3, this is the square root of cosine squared. Uh, which is the absolute value of cosine, which because this is an indefinite integral, we're just going to call it 3 cosine theta. So now we're going to substitute back into the integral. So now this is going to be 1 over, if we take x to the fourth, that's going to be um, uh, 81 uh, sine to the uh, fourth theta. This factor became 3 cosine theta, so we put 3 cosine theta there, and dx became 3 cosine theta d theta. So uh, what happens is the 3 cosine theta is cancel out neatly, um, and I get d theta, and this is 1 over uh, sine to the fourth uh, theta d theta. Now we're going to build on prior art that we did, and we're going to realize that this 1 over sine to 4 theta, you don't have any cosine to help you with the du substitution. So we're going to view this as 1 over 81, and this is the integral of cosecant to the 4th theta d theta. And we're going to say, using um, the techniques that we learned in the previous section, uh, we're going to call cosecant to the fourth, cosecant squared times cosecant squared. Now, uh, we're going to use the fact that um, there's a trig identity that the cosecant squared theta is the cotangent squared theta plus one, and we know that the derivative of the cotangent is the negative cosecant squared theta. So now we're going to use our u substitution, u equal cotangent theta, and we get uh, u squared plus 1. This is du, and there's the minus sign that was part of the substitution. So this is minus 1 over 81, and this is going to be 1 third, um, and I, now I'm uh, reversing my, this is u cubed over 3, so I'm reversing my substitution here with this. So I get uh, one-third cotangent cubed theta plus cotangent theta plus c. 
And if I use my triangle, then I know that the cotangent is going to be the square root of 9 minus x squared over 3. I'm cubing it here, plus, plus the cotangent. And I simplify this nicely, and I get this as my final answer. Now, the key takeaways from this example uh, are um, that if we run across uh, this kind of an expression, we get the square root of a squared minus b squared x squared, that this substitution worked in this case. x equal a over b sine theta, and theta runs from these values. Now, there's one more case that we're going to look at. This one, and this is going to be a definite integral, which means we don't have to draw uh, the triangle, but it involves some different things. So this is the definite integral from 0 to 1 over 6. This is x to the fifth. This is 36x squared plus 1 whole to the 3 halves dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. OK. <clears throat> uh, the first thing we're going to notice is that the denominator, um, 36x squared plus 1 whole to the 3 halves, can be written as the square root cubed. So we're going to be focusing on this. And this is the substitution that will work in this case. So x is equal to 1 over 6 tan theta. Now let's draw the triangle, even though we don't have to. I did draw the triangle over here. This is theta down here. So the tangent of theta is 6x, and 6x is 6x over 1. So that means we know the hypotenuse, and that's 36x squared plus 1. Uh, we won't need this, but I'm doing this uh, just to uh, reinforce the idea. And here, then dx, if x is this, dx is 1 half secant squared theta d theta. So the denominator up here becomes uh, doing this substitution and this trig identity, the absolute value of secant theta cubed. Now, we are going to be worrying about our, uh, our limits. Okay, So if x equals 0, we're solving 0 is equal to 1 6 tan theta. And that tells us that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0, which is 0. If x is equal to 1 6, this is 1 6 is equal to 1 6 tan theta. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. So we're going to be changing uh, our limits um, uh, to uh, being um, the integral from 0 to pi over 4, and then we're going to substitute in. Now we have x to the fifth, so x to the fifth is going to be, here's what x was, so this is going to be 1 over 7776, 7, 7, 10 to the fifth theta. My uh, denominator, we found, uh, ended up being uh, the absolute value of secant theta whole cubed. But when we're in the first quadrant, the secant is positive, so I can drop the absolute values. I'm being careful about that, though. And then dx was 1 over 6 secant squared theta d theta, so I substitute that in. And you see uh, there's quite a bit of simplification that can happen. Let's move that big old number out in front. And if I move the big old number out in front, I get 1 over 46,656. Uh, this is the integral from 0 to power of 4. This is tangent to the fifth theta over secant theta d theta. Now, the way to proceed uh, evaluating this now uh, is going to be that we uh, want to change. I would change everything to sines and cosines and simplify and see what happens. So that's what I'm doing here. Make sure you follow this step. But now I have sine to the fifth, which means if I strip that out, as we did in an earlier section, we'll have sine theta d theta. 
and I will change the sine to the fourth to be sine squared squared. So this is one minus cosine squared. So you see I have so, uh, something in terms of a cosine and something that almost is uh, the differential of that. So this is all ripe for use substitution. Now I expand this because I have to square it. There will be a middle term I'm dividing by this and I'm going to let u equal uh, cosine of theta. So if I let u equal cosine of theta, uh, what happens is my limits change again and I'm going to go from now um, 1 to the square root of 2 over 2 and I have, when I simplify this, u to the minus 4 minus 2, u to the minus 2 plus 1 du. I add 1 to the exponents. So I'd be careful with my SIGNs. And I note the fact that uh, the u substitution causes a minus sign to happen here. Because if u is equal to the cosine, the derivative is the negative sign. So you get this negative sign. You plug in the numbers. And you get one of my favorite numbers. This is 1 over... 17,496 minus 11 square root of 2 all over 279,936. Now some of my students would say that this exact answer is an ugly number, but I would remind them that there are no ugly numbers just like there are no ugly babies. Now the key takeaway on this one uh, is that if we run across the square root of a squared plus b squared x squared, this substitution x equal a over b tan theta can work. And in fact, let's review. So we saw when we had this kind of configuration, uh, u squared minus a squared, this was the substitution of record. Uh, if we had a squared minus u squared, this worked and u squared plus 1, this worked. Or, summarized in a more general uh, way, if I have this form, this is the trig identity, this is the substitution, and these are the limit assumptions. If I have this form, which is different than that, this is the substitution that will work. That's the identity we're basing things on, and those are the limits. And if I have this one, this form, it will look like this. This will be the substitution that often can work and should certainly be considered. And these are the limit assumptions. And these substitutions can make sense even if the radical is not present. And a lot of students will say, okay, but that's it, right? That's all I need to know. Well, the answer is no. Let's do a couple more examples. Please evaluate this one. And uh, we're uh, finding the indefinite integral uh, of x over the square root of, this is uh, 2x squared minus 4x minus 7. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, now this is more involved because you might say, this doesn't look like anything we've been doing, but we're going to change this denominator by completing the square. Now the first thing we do is we factor out the 2, being left with this, and now we need to change this into a perfect square. So we're going to be changing x squared minus 2x into a perfect square. So you um, add and subtract 1 here, and now uh, what we have is, and again we haven't changed the value because we added 0, but now what we're going to be able to do is we're going to combine this minus 1 with the 7 over 2. And we're going to realize that this is x minus 1 whole squared. And so you see we were able to write this as this. Those two things are equal. So now the root becomes this one. And that means we can look at x equal x minus 1. And you see that this is going to be something squared minus something else squared. So we're going to say x minus 1 is equal to 3 over root 2 secant theta. That means x is equal to this. And that means that dx is equal to this. Make sure you follow this. And that also means that this is the triangle that we will have. And again, the secant theta is going to be 
um, uh, root 2 times x minus 1 all over 3. And so we can figure out what this side is. And this side is uh, exactly what we had under the radical. OK. Uh, and so then if we look at this, substitution the radical is this. With this substitution, it is this. And that's going to be 3 tan theta because it's an imp uh, it's a uh, indefinite integral. So that becomes 3 tan theta. And then I had x, and I know that x was equal to this. Uh, so I'm going to be substituting um, uh, that in as well. And so I have that this is equal to this. There's my um, dx substitution. Now I'm going to do algebra, and I simplify it to this, and then I integrate it. Remember the antiderivative of the secant theta is um, uh, the natural logarithm of the secant theta plus tangent theta, the absolute value, plus, and the antiderivative of secant squared is the tangent theta plus c. But now I have to go back and change this into my native variables. And so I'm going to look at my triangle again, and I'm going to write what the secant theta is and what the tan theta is, and I add tan theta again. This is my final answer. Let's do another example. Evaluate the following integral. This is the indefinite integral of e to the fourth, e to the four x, uh, the square root of one plus e to the two x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. All right, uh, so what we can do uh, in this case is look at this integral say this is e to the 3x times e to the x, and this is the square root of 1 plus e to the 2x dx. And we're going to use a, a substitution, and uh, the substitution that we're going to uh, use is that e to the x is going to be equal to tangent theta. So you see what's going to happen is then uh, we're going to say e to the uh, x is tan uh, theta, and so this becomes um, e to the x dx is secant squared theta uh, d theta, and 1 plus e to the 2x is, uh, is going to end up being the secant theta by this sequence. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to say uh, that this is going to be uh, uh, this uh, expression. And now we're making that substitution. So this is tangent cubed theta. This is secant theta. This is secant squared theta d theta. And we end up with this. Now, this is an integral that you know how to do because what we would do in this case is we could pull out both those factors and do an integral of, uh, of secants, and you could finish this. And I think I've probably talked about this enough. Now I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and finish it. Hang on. So we have this. So here what we're doing is we're pulling out one tan theta and one secant theta, so that's what we have out here. I'm now this is a commitment to do the integral in terms of secant, so I'm changing the tangent squared to secant squared theta minus one. Now we do the u substitution. This is v is equal to uh, secant theta. Uh, so we can get this, and we add one to the exponent divided by the new exponent, and we get this. And now we have to go back in terms of the original variables. Now, uh, in the right triangle, remember that tan theta is equal to e to the x over 1. Tangent theta is e to the x over 1. This is the square root of 1 plus uh, e to the 2x. So this integral becomes this, and we're done. Now, there's much more uh, involved in uh, this Calculus 2 course, but not in this lecture.
In closing for now, more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless you all.